What's your sense at the moment that there are more people not getting a diagnosis of um, ME that should or that there are people being overdiagnosed? Uh, well, I would say so. The, um, there's some research that came out fairly recently that indicated 50, at least 50% of people with long COVID have ME like symptoms, a slightly different figure from the one David referenced earlier on. So if you add that to um, the 250,000, that's 1.3 million people, those people aren't being diagnosed with ME, they're being diagnosed with long COVID and mm. um, and actually what we found with the Decode ME study, we wanted 5,000 people diagnosed with um, ME after mm. you know having had long COVID and we're just not getting those. We've had a thousand people I think yeah. that have come forward because they're just not being diagnosed. Yeah. But David, you said your likelihood of being diagnosed, diagnosed is um, directly proportional to your proximity to a, a centre. Um, what are those centres? There are many any CFS services up and down the country. But yes. because the diagnostic criteria, we've got these positive diagnostic criteria now since the most recent NICE up, up, updates, but previously the diagnosis was a diagnosis of, um, of exclusion. Yes. There's no yeah. proven treatment for this. Actually, it's very similar to long COVID. There is no proven treatment that fixes this. And therefore, the majority of the treatment is about what supportive care is available, um, how we can help people live with the disease, how we can educate people into pacing. Um, and because of that, there is a massive disparity in the services that are offered up and down the country. Um, if you take a disease like diabetes, there are very clear, you get the diagnosis when your HbA1c is this, you then get this tablet, then this tablet, then this tablet. And therefore, diabetes clinics up and down the country all look the same. If you take a disease like ME, then diagnostic criteria, we've well, got to have these four parameters and then you can be referred to a service that's going to help you live with it. Some of them will have a doctor and those doctors will be happy to try different therapies based on mm. low grade C level data. So mast cell, mast cell activation syndrome, for example, that we spoke about. There are many doctors that will try antihistamine drugs or sodium chromoglycate, mast cell stabilizer. There are doctors that will try that because we think it might work without a good evidence base, but they're low risk drugs. In other centres, they'll say, well, there's no evidence base for it, so let's wait until there is an evidence base before we do anything. Yeah. Because of that, the service itself differs. The engagement between the service and the primary care differs. Well, that, that's my, that was kind of the thrust of the question. How do you get to the service from primary care? Presumably, you've got to be referred by a GP. GP, yeah. They're all GP and, referrals. Right. And the GP is going to look at the NICE guidelines, which still talk about CBT and graded exercise. They do. I looked at them before this show. They don't say they don't say this is the remedy, but they still talk about them sort of somewhere towards the bottom of the page. And then there's a long list of um, tests, including ESR and CRP and all sorts of other blood tests. Are those tests designed to exclude other things, or are they used to indicate ME? So those tests are all designed to exclude... Uh, ME mimics, so the, the things right. like the CBS yes. disease, yeah. the, um, the l l um, chronic low-grade inflammation from polymyalgia rheumatica, for example, mm. they're the test to exclude another cause right. of the, the fatiguing illness, so they're all there. CBT is still in there, but CBT is a supportive tool. Right. CBT is no longer but a treatment. dealing with the consequences. Dealing with the consequences the rather than trying to mm. say, come on, pull your socks mm. up and get out of bed. Um, and the graded exercise therapy, actually the most recent review said graded exercise therapy in the way that it was originally mm. designed is not fit for purpose yes. because it doesn't achieve the goal. Now, what we now talk about are personalized activity plans. You find out where the energy envelope is I and you so, create yeah. the yeah. right activity plan based around where that energy yeah. envelope is. Now, actually, a lot of this is terminology because a graded exercise treatment versus a personalized activity plan, if the activity goes through different stages, different levels, based it's around a growing, yeah. it, it mm. is graded, mm. but it's a lot about terminology. And I think the words graded exercise therapy are enough to trigger um, antibodies in a lot of people, purely because of the concept, this thought process that people will say, 
you go away for, I mean, the first week you do this, and the second week you do this, the third week you do yeah. that, and yeah. people follow that plan without... And feel they're failing if they person. can't follow the plan, exactly. which is even worse for their psychology. I don't know any mm. healthcare practitioner today that would say, do this exercise irrespective of how it makes you feel. Yeah. Um, but the whole concept of great exercise therapy, the terminology is the bit that's definitely been dropped now.